Well, thank you to the organizers and judges for the opportunity to share my research in this forum. Broadly, my thesis studies the question of whether symbolic recognition schemes in organizations can backfire. So these are the moments that organizations take, especially to uh, acknowledge and call out members for exceptional contributions to the group. And I'm asking, could there be potential downsides that might undermine the positive motivational effect that these kinds of recognition schemes have on their members. Let me motivate this with a quote. This comes from Jeff, a manager of two exceptional employees in the company I study, amongst a team of others. And he describes what it's like to try to get these two exceptional employees the recognition that they deserve. He says, I went in trying to get both. At the end of the day, I had to give the exceptional rating to Blair, but I gave them the exact same bonus. I took from Blair's pot, I took from Jerry, who I knew was leaving. Still, Chris was irate, visibly shook, saying, I can't believe you rated me solid. Everyone is gonna look at me this year and know I was solid. I've never been solid at anything in my whole life. This conversation was mid-February. He left voluntarily April 28th. So in asking this question, do symbolic recognition schemes backfire? It's essentially, is this something idiosyncratic about Chris? or can we generalize this more broadly to organizations and their members? In my research, I find that yes, these kinds of symbolic recognition schemes are especially prone to the kinds of social comparison costs that make members feel hurt when they miss it, but deserve the recognition in the first place. I show that top performers, so in this illustration, those that are amongst the top, most exceptional 20% say, are more likely to exit organizations after arbitrarily being denied high performance recognition. I'm gonna show you some causal evidence to show that it's not something else we may worry about confounding that story. And part of that evidence is going to be the fact that in this organization, when high performers don't get the recognition, they end up actually being overcompensated monetarily, receiving the highest bonuses. So why do organizations use these kinds of recognition schemes to begin with? Well, they're seen to reinforce pro-social behavior and can crowd in intrinsic motivation in ways that money and monetary bonuses can't. There's evidence that they do induce good behavior and higher productivity from anywhere from CEOs to employees working in call centers. And once an organization has a desire to try to motivate their members this way, it's relatively cost-effective, easy to bestow. So why might recognition schemes like this backfire? It starts with the logic that to the extent that members are motivated to get this calling out to be so recognized, it means not everyone's being called out and, set it and put in the highlight. That recognition matters to them because not everyone gets it, so creating these winners in the symbolic recognition game means that others are going to have to lose out for it to be worthwhile. We also know that we have a tendency to assess how we're doing relative to those we see who are doing better off than us in those assessments. And so considering how this works in a proactive sense, this kind of invidious comparison can come with absolute costs to the extent that members might try to adjust their environment to minimize any kind of pain from relative comparisons, which is nicely shown in an aphorism that is better to be a big frog in a small pond than a small frog in a big pond, to get to the idea of, to the extent we can choose which environment we wanna be in, those that make us look better off relatively are more attractive sort of pictured here with these socially distanced frogs at Frog Pond in Boston. So to really get at the causal inference of whether or not these symbolic recognition schemes do in fact backfire means overcoming four large hurdles. First, it's important to show that it's not being driven by even small marginal differences in performance which could mean it was just a status runaway dynamics story, not the under recognition itself. It's also really important to rule out that members aren't reacting to missing monetary compensation that 
sometimes are components with this kind of rewards and schemes, a prize pool at the end of the day. It's also important to rule out that members aren't actually reacting to a violation of the norms and the expectations that they thought they had regarding the organization that they were part of. And then finally, anything we're testing in one moment in terms of being under recognition can't have actual material or real concerns in the future regarding reputation, promotion, and bonus potentials, for instance. And so the natural experiment I'm gonna share with you allows me to test, control, and net out all these possible four confounds in the story, leaving just the symbolic recognition at play. It's not important for the causal story, but I'll note that in my context, it is also common knowledge that this symbolic under recognition amongst the top performers is also arbitrary. So I test this in a large company that I call Farmet. They pay well above market wages, which lets them attract the best that the labor market has to offer. And then explicitly, they use a pay for performance scheme to keep these highly talented individuals motivated working for Farmed. And they do this using a force ranking distribution that has a very hard line at the top 20% mark. And it's this very strict enforcement of no more than those 20% of all employees can get exceptional that lets me create a counterfactual of who would have been exceptional are just as exceptional as those who get it, but for this fact that only 20% can, they're given a rating of solid instead. To show you how this works, at the beginning of every performance system uh, yearly review, Managers still end up nominating a full quarter of their company as exceptional, coming from this highly talented pool of employees. Then they begin to calibrate, so making sure that every nominated exceptional is just as exceptional as all the other nominees, starting at the lowest level of the organization and working their way up this very hierarchical company. They can punt those decisions each layer. And so it's not until the final meetings of these calibration sessions where it's just the executives trying to get down to 20% from basically the entire risk set of nominees. And at this point, they have no line of sight into the workers' actual day-to-day -day contributions, their productivity, their contribution. And so what you see in the quantitative data is that those who do receive the exceptional awards in any given year look no different in terms of exceptionality and high performance than the unlucky 5% who instead of getting an exceptional rating receive something like solid instead. And so this allows me to show the impact of this under recognition. Here you can see this larger bar is those who are under recognized in this way and the y-axis is the proportion who then left voluntarily 18 months after this uh, 2016 performance review that I concentrate on. And you can see they're more likely than their counterfactual counterparts, those that did get the exceptional rating. You may already think that maybe it's actually the exceptionals who got the, the high recognition being more motivated that's generating this pattern. But when we compare them to the never nominated group of those who got the solid instead of an exceptional recognized label, it's still the fact that these under recognized are still leaving at a higher proportion. And what this company is essentially doing is it's taking a subset of their most exceptional talent, the highest performers, and they're inducing them to look for work at competitors at the same instance, same incidence as these lowest performers that are very rarely ever identified in this company to begin with. And this is despite the fact that in this company, managers give these underrecognized employees the biggest bonuses in the company for that year, for their merit for that bonus pay. They take from the rest of their team in order to make sure that for as much as they can, the under-recognized exceptional employees on their team don't feel like it was uh, their responsibility, that they really are valued. 
And so this is the percent of base salary, but it also works in nominal numbers as well. So this translates into a exit likelihood of 71% greater odds of exit just from under recognition. And we can start checking for those confounds that are important to rule out. So adding things like performance checks using prior year ratings, we don't see much change in just the impact of under recognition. Also, controlling for the amount of bonus they get in any given year also doesn't adjust it much either. We can look at uh, these employees' trust and cooperation scores before at the given rating and to try to see maybe this is coming as a violation of that fairness, but not enough to investigate that as a story either. I find that these underrecognized, if anything, make more in bonus pay in future periods, not less. And finally, there doesn't seem to be much evidence suggesting that there is a shadow of concern on the promotion side of things for these underrecognized in future periods. So to summarize this research, I find that there is evidence that these symbolic recognition schemes can backfire in organizations. Top performers are more likely to exit because of the symbolic underrecognition. That's about a 60 to 70% greater odds of exiting. And importantly, symbolic under-recognition or recognition matters is more important, it's felt more deeply to these employees more than compensation. In fact, they're making the most in bonus pay and there aren't any downside concerns to, to continue with that either. Thank you very much. I look forward to questions.